My name is Stuart Brisley, and the title of this exhibition is Headwinds, and it's, a, it's actually a collection of works which we think together kind of complement each other and make a, an overall argument entitled Headwinds. That argument is about a relationship between um, what I'm probably better known for, uh, performance over the years, and um, a series of three-dimensional works and also paintings, one or two photographs. I had a long studentship. I studied for 11 years in Guildford, the Royal College of Art in London, in the Academy der Bildenden Kunst in Munich, and Florida State University in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, I, so I, I taught for a while in New York, and, um, and therefore I experienced a, a, a lot of cultural activities in the uh, very early 60s, moving up to the middle, middle 60s. So my edu education was kind of broad-based, both European and American. Um, America at that time was very expansive and, and progressive and lively, and New York, of course, especially so. Coming back into England, it felt like having to shrink to fit something which um, I'd, I'd actually tried to get away from earlier on. And, and, and I, over a two-year period, I, um, I came, my work came to a stop. And I had to either uh, think about doing something else, like gardening or whatever it might be, or um, I had to, you know, uh, out of necessity, um, start to work again. And I started to think, well, what can I do? And, and I began to think about the very basic things of life. How, you know, what, what can I relate to? What can I work with? And um, so I began to think, of, think about the most basic things, eating, drinking, uh, just breathing, you know, just those things that we, ought, we have to do in order to survive. And um, that's what led me to making a first what I called at the time, I think, action, or it could have been event. The words performance didn't really, wasn't really a common name at the time. When I first started making performances, uh, there is as always this purist notion, you know, like the the event is the thing in itself, and there is absolutely no need to, you know, for any kind of reproduction of it because um, you know this, it's it's the thing in itself and its memory or interpretation and so forth which counts. And um, there is, uh, but after a while, I realised that. Um, you know, like if I wanted to engage with institutions and so forth, I actually had to think about that a little bit more carefully. And um, so I, I started to work with uh, photographers, and, um, but I always rejected the idea of documentation. Uh, and, and I... I, I um, because documentation is never objective, as we know. It ha can't be. Um, you know, you, the, uh, you only have to have three people with three cameras taking photographs of the same thing. You realise how different they all are, and there's no, there isn't an ob objectivity in it. The, and the interpretations are really interesting. So my approach to the idea of um, you know collecting information, what is was much more to do with making another work, which sat on the base of the performance, as it were. The performance was one, one key thing in relation to 
to everything else. I won. I never really properly prepared for it, as in the in a conventional sense. Two, I I did no uh, rehearsals whatsoever. So the whole thing was based on the moment and and actually entering into the into whatever situation I was in. I maybe had seen it a little, been there to the place I was going to work in and seen. And uh, so I had some some sense of what it was, and the and so everything, so the activities were contingent on on what um, what was available. I did a work where I didn't eat for ten days, and my food this was over Christmas period, and the food was given to uh, whoever wanted to eat it. And this, I did it well, well, first in Berlin and secondly in London. And for example, in London. Um, after Christmas, there was a certain amount of publicity. We, uh, we never ask for publicity. It either happens or it doesn't. And um, it's all done it's because of grassroots and my feeling of being, uh, you know, uh, the, a key thing to, to operate through, if you, if you can, if it happens. And we began to get lots of, of, of chefs because the publicity, you know, whatever got into the papers, actually talked about, you know, like the cooking and so we got, and eventually we had people phoning up and saying where they'd like to book a table and we'd say, there's only one meal available, mine, that you can have. And, um, and but you can have half of it if there are two of you or, but, you know, it's, uh, and so, I, began, I realized that you, one could actually draw uh, from this experience, you could draw in people, from, you could call up people from a, you know, by doing certain things, you know, to have this engagement. So the audience was, was, uh, was always crucial to the event. Um, and, um, you know, this, is, this has actually continued in various ways. Because of that, I, 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 was, I was engaged with activities which I, it, it didn't matter to me whether it was art or not. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't concerned with the question of is this art or isn't it? Um, uh, and other people might have been because it was usually taking place in, in cultural circumstances. Although I did quite a lot of, um, of direct action as well um, uh, in the street and so forth. I worked in a, in a furniture factory, one of uh, the works of which is upstairs uh, in, in the show at the moment, as you know, made of the chair legs. So I, and that was, that was I, I worked in that factory on the, on the factory floor. And I worked and I looked for the, what I thought was the least attractive place to work in, which happened to be um, working um, uh, at the, in the metal polishing shop. And, uh, and, and I got to know the people working and in there on the, you know, working on those, uh, on the machines and so forth. And I spent six, nine months with them. Um, and this was done, you know, I, I had the, in a sense, the freedom of the factory. So I did have contacts with the, the, the managerial staff, but, but, but my main contact was with, um, with, with people working on the, in these rather, sort of grindingly basic bits of labor where, you know, like people are essentially alienated. In the main um, factory, which had just doubled its size, by the way, it was called Hilly, Hilly Furniture Factory in, in Haverhill in Suffolk. Um, the, I, I, I watched the, uh, the, you know, the production lines and, and um, I, I remember seeing some chair legs being being uh, produced, and then when they came to the end of the line, they were stacked, and they stacked on a curve, rather rather interesting curve, interesting the way they did that, and I negotiated with the, with the factory to 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 turn that curve into a circle, a full circle, and um, uh, and and in my mind was a as a it was a kind of ironic gesture in relation to the to the factory line, you know, the, the process, the, the sort of Fordist, you know, 
process whereby people, the, the, the system was divided up into small units and you'd be on a line, you know, doing a tiny thing and wouldn't necessarily know what you were doing it for. Now I look back historically and I can, and other people have written about this, so I'm also influenced by what people have written about what I have done and other people, of course. Um, I, I, I realise that there was there were certain key things that um, that I was engaged in without really quite knowing at the time what I was doing, and they they were, uh, for example, there is a strong uh, I think uh, pattern running through this, which what we we usually call it the, the, the found object, the found object, like for example. Um, the um, the chair legs are, in a sense, my understanding of a f of of a of a found object. Maya Baljolu, who I um, who I live with, uh, um, uh, when we when we when we first sort of got together, we one of the things we did was the was the um, cenotaph project, and uh, I I'd been appointed as an artist to the Imperial War Museum. For six months, and um, and uh, it's very very difficult to know what to do in these kind of scenes. And um, I wandered about in the Imperial War Museum, and and um, but I one day I bumped into this little um, uh, model of the uh, of the cenotaph, and um, it was uh, about that big. And I and I that that's what gave me the idea of making a making a cenotaph. And, um, and taking it around the United Kingdom. In 1919, uh, they, uh, uh, to cut a long story short, the, the government decided to have a victory march. And at the head of the victory march, they, they, uh, they contacted Lutyens, the architect, to make uh, some kind of um, focal point. And that focal point was the cenotaph. And it was um, placed in the middle of the road in Westminster. Uh, at the at the head of the um, you know the victory the victory celebrations, so when um, uh, it was over, the uh, people because they you know the, the, in the first world war there were so many deaths, people actually put flowers and it, it went on for a long time and uh, so the government decided that they they had to leave it up. Um, and then um, they, they thought they would uh, make it permanent, but move it to a, an appropriate place. And the, government, and the, uh, the public were um, adamant that it should stay exactly where it was, which is why it sits in the middle of the road and has no real approach. In order to transport the, the cenotaph, we had to have it be a certain size. We couldn't actually make a big one. We had to. So, and we, the first place that we were invited to to work in was a was in um, was with Locus in uh, Newcastle, and uh, we arra they arranged for us to show this work in a council flat in um, in Cuthbert Village, Gateshead, and. Um, so the size of the um, of the cenotaph was related to the height of the ceiling in council flats. Standard size height is seven feet six inches. The cenotaph is seven feet three and a half inches because it's made in sections, and so we had to be able to get it in there and then put it together so that it would so it could sit inside the, the room. So that was the first, but that was a key, key decision because it's all about human scale. What Maya brought to it was a kind of critical insight into the, into the context of it. And I think that's probably, I mean, that was actually apparent all the way through. We eventually produced a publication and I think that's where, which she was largely responsible for. And that's where it really is, is, is in a sense, concretized you know in the in the publication which was always going to be for, for us the actual nature the actual work the process was of, of showing it was what led to 
to that, uh, to that publication. There are also a number of paintings which, uh, which I produced over, over the last few years, which are, which are all in, um, in connection with um, uh, my initial interest in, the, um, in, in William Blake's poem, uh, Jerusalem. Since the um, Jerusalem as a poem and, a, and as a song is actually commonly commonly known, even known to be sung in football matches and things, it becomes the site for me of something to really think about. It's a very English kind of uh, question, you know, where the, uh, uh, the this question of landscape and so on, and uh, you know, it has its own history with landscape painters and so on. So I was, I was, so I was interested in doing something where the the language was common to 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 people. So I didn't want to to um, to place it, as it were, outside the frame of of a very common understanding of what art could be. I.e., you un you can you can you know what it is. You can see it. Um, you can see how it's done. Um, uh, Etc. And um, you know what you know the reference to what you're looking at, landscape of one sort or another. So I tried to. So I started by making a painting called Jerusalem to start it with, and it's uh, uh, it's it's actually a painting of us where the land the in a wood where the. Um, you know, the idea of uh, the ecology being healthy is to allow everything to rot, to grow, to, you know, to transform itself and so on. So that first painting is, shows that kind of, um, the, the sort of, uh, th that process in, in, in its various forms. Um, you know, trees falling down, other trees growing well and so on. And then I, from the second one, I went to, the second painting is called Pit, and it's, a, it, it's close to where I grew up, and I grew up in a, in a landscape where the woods are full of nasty little holes, of, um, which, were, which were dug um, at, uh, in the, I think, probably 17th, 18th century um, for, for smelting iron. They were digging up uh, ingots of iron, and they're everywhere around where I grew up. And um, so that, that, so here we have a, an industrial, life, but not yet kind of fully developed. And here, so there's a pit, which actually has another meaning as well, of course, as well, of falling into the pit. And so it has dual things attached to it. And um, then there's one where, uh, where, where the landscape is tailored and kind of, um, which has got a, got a, 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 a wood and then a field and then some shadow and it's a sh so there's an aspect of 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 the um, uh, summary aspect but it also has a dark sort of shadowy part which is sort of death-like so there's a gain a, a comparison between the two then it kind of um, it sort of opens out I um, there's a nuclear power station involved, a nuclear terminus where nuclear waste is actually transported to Sellafield, and um, so you begin to arrive at points of danger where in the landscape are, um, you know, like activities which, which are dangerous and which have been proved to be dangerous, the last being the Japanese one. I have made works which actually are based on words which carry a tremendous amount of weight. For example, I made a, made a, a film, Arbeit mat frei, with the, the, the words that are over the gates of the concentration camps. Um, so I, you know, there are times when I want to take something that's so, you know, completely known, but only take the surface of it, the words. And in, this, is, this is how I've actually approached the question of uh, Bloody Sunday, which is, a, which, is, which is not something you can easily encompass in any way. You know, it keeps getting, you know, it, keep, it continues. So the idea of just taking the words and t 
turning them and so forth is, is a way of trying to express that, that continuing process of uh, engagement. So, bloody Sunday, bloody Monday, bloody Tuesday, you know, etc., etc., for the week. I think what, what, is, um, what, is, what is really um, um, exciting for me, and actually moving as well, is the opportunity that, that, that has been given to me um, to show a, a body of work which, um, which where, I've, where we've had the opportunity to um, make connections between different works from different periods um, uh, to make a new narrative, to make something new out of it, and this is this is the uh, th this is the this is the um, kind of uh, outcome of that opportunity.